Well, Margaret's crew's been working here for about a week, and this is test unit number four. And it, we're getting to the point where we can really see some, um, there's a lot of things to see here, but some of it's starting to make sense. And the surface that I'm standing on here now is not sterile clay, so we're still in old topsoil here. But two things popped up. For one, with this rectangle that I'm scribing with my trowel here is the very base of a pier or a post. It had bricks and, and limestones kind of cast back inside of it. But this is a structural support of some kind. It looks to me like a pier for a building or something like that. And then all around it, but not across it, so coming up to it on both sides and around here, is this very red soil, which you can see here in the corner that my trowel is pointing at here. This is, there's bands of this very red, peaty kind of organic uh, stain, uh, mineral stained red soil alternating with the, this very bright gray silver uh, silt. And you can see across this whole corner, those bands, those, we call them laminations, like laminated wood, it's layers. But what that, what has created that, that layering effect is standing water. So basically what that suggests that uh, standing water was able to stand here long enough to create these silt layers and to also, in some cases, stain that silt with manganese, which happens in water. And you can only really have that in two, in two situations. One in the bottom of a deep pit, like a cistern, for instance. We often see this kind of staining, staining in the bottom of a cistern. Uh, but we're not in a deep pit. We're only, you know, a foot and a half down. And we are next to uh, what looks to be a structural support. So it suggests to me, initially, that this could be standing water beneath a building. Um, the thing about that is that all of the material that seems to have been generated from inside that building, none of it seems to post-date 1815. And that building, and particularly if this is a, a one wall or a corner, is lined up quite nicely with this corner kitchen on the back of the house. Mm -hmm. And of course the corner kitchen, uh, the tradition has it that that was built in around 1815. So it could be that what we're looking at is the original kitchen to this house, or one place to cook in this house, was in a summer kitchen that was a, a, a separate building, perhaps about the same width, uh, north-south mm -hmm. anyway. And we're looking at one wall and we're looking at the, the crawl space, if you will, underneath the building. We're also getting debris that's generated from inside that building. Um, and that it ceases to function that way around 1815, coincidentally, when this building is built. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean it was just de demolished there. It could be that the building just changed function okay. and it became something like a uh, tool shed or, you know, I mean, we can have servants quarters, you can have anything you want in a backyard behind a house like this. Um, but it, 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 man, it, I think it probably did survive a little ways because the material beneath it is pretty intact, like it didn't get a chance to be destroyed by foot traffic later. So whatever this building was, you know, it looks to have some sort of symmetry with the construction date of the, of the, summer, of the, right. of the uh, corner kitchen at the back of the house. So that's what you get. This is just a little window. And the only way to elaborate on that, and I'm sure about 30, at least 30% of what I just said was wrong. But it's okay. a good start. Yeah, it starts. And so the way you elaborate on that is to expand your excavation so you can see broader areas in, you know, horizontally to get a better footprint of whatever was here. But it's very exciting. It's also very early. Yeah. We're looking at the absolute first generation uh, of, of St. Genevieve at this location. That's excellent. Yeah, I know that Dr. Conley, when he was restor restoring the Bulgic House in 1957, was looking for a summer kitchen. And he couldn't find any evidence. And, it, you know, it doesn't, I mean, it can also be, you know, I don't know what the the history of the family is for servants, for slaves, all of that, but all that's a possibility. Right. And so you don't want to predict the future too too forcefully here. We don't, or predict the past in this case. It's like we <laughs> yeah. just, it's, you know, it's near a kitchen and we know they had summer kitchens. There's a lot of animal bone here, but there's also serving ware here. And, you know, if we can just speculate some more, it's, it's very coarse wares mostly. The kind of thing that you might see associated with uh, 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 a family of, of lower socioeconomic status. So are we looking at servants, something like that? So there's a lot to do. You know, you'd have to open up more and you'd have to look at the family history very carefully, uh, census data, all that kind of stuff to mm -hmm. see if that jibes with what we're seeing in the ground. But it's an enormous, well-preserved archive right here behind the building. Right so behind exciting, the really. Thank you so much.